Okay, let me welcome my colleagues, my junior, my students, and my colleagues elsewhere in other countries. Let us continue our discussion on ependymomas. We are getting closer to this surgical techniques, which is more important for all of us. In this session, I will give you a brief overview regarding the surgical technique. In my successive thing, we will discuss about each and every step of the surgery to prevent complications. Coming to the surgical technique for ependymum of the spine. There are many surgical approaches. We will be discussing the most important and the most common approach, which is the posterior approach. That is the approach from behind. I'm Dr. Kalyan Bamakanti. I'm a neurosurgeon, spine surgeon from Avir Glenigal's Global Hospital, Hyderabad. So uh, for all those who have attended my previous sessions, you know that magnet MRI, plane and contrast images, are the most important methods for diagnosis of the ependymoma preoperatively. Okay. Uh, in our next sessions, once we complete the techniques in detail, we'll discuss how will you go for other approaches. In general, the evaluation includes assessing the general health, neurological status and other factors that may impact the surgical approach. So how do you do the preoperative planning? Most important is review of the imaging studies, that is the MRI. Spend sufficient time on reading the MRI, both the plane images and the contrast images. Determine the exact location, the size and extent of the tumor. Also look for other characteristics like, is there a plane? Is the tumor well-defined or not? Look for the plane on T2-weighted images. Look for other features like presence of calcification, presence of cyst, presence of you know, tumor edema and all these things. Optimal, optimal surgical approach is planned based on your tumor characters, which you have studied, studied on the MRI imaging and also on the patient characters and the patient factors and the surgeon's expertise. Anesthesia. We always give a general anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia is rarely used except for few patients in few specific conditions. Patient, because it's a posterior approach, that is you are approaching the patient from behind, the patient is placed prone on the operation table. Ensure that all the pressure points are properly padded. You can see the knee, you can see the heel, we have padded all the pressure points. The abdomen is well supported. The abdomen is free because of the frame. Ensure that the neck is properly positioned above the heart level and there should be no compression on the neck. Skin incision, which you typically use, is a midline incision made in the back over the affected spinal segment. This one. This patient has a cervical neck tumor in the spinal cord, so it is in the midline over the neck on the back aspect. Then the muscles are dissected, the vertebral lamina. You can see these are the intact lamina. In this segment, we have removed, removed the bone and the lamina. So the spinal cord with the tumor comes into picture. The tumor resection, we open the dura mater. You can see the du dural flaps which have been, which are, you can see the dural flaps which have been cut and, and pulled apart and pulled apart. So this is spinal cord tumor. You can see the tumor bulge. So in this picture, we have made a small myelotomy. We have made a small opening on the spinal cord. Once you made a, a small opening, the tumor comes into picture. You can see this grayish red color tumor. You can also notice we have preserved the vein the central vein, which is a major vein near the tumor, but the smaller tributaries you can coagulate. The tumor, which is well exposed by various microsurgical techniques, you develop the cleavage plane from the surrounding. You develop the cleavage plane from the surrounding spinal cord and remove it in total. If it is densely adherent, you may have to remove some portions of the tumor. Here, the tumor has been completely removed 
and the spinal cord is well seen. So the tumor removal requires meticulous dissection and careful monitoring of the spinal cord function sometimes depending on the financial condition, the duration of surgery and the protocol in, in your institute. This meticulous dissection minimizes the risk of damage to the spinal cord. Controlling bleeding is very important. You, you ensure perfect hemostresis. You ensure that the bleeding is completely controlled and then the wound is closed using appropriate sutures. The hemostress is crucial to minimize the risk of post-operative bleeding and you usually place a drain so that if at all there is some bleeding, the bleeding comes out of the drain. The patient is closely monitored in an intensive care unit or a specialized neurosurgical ward. Pain management, wound care, wound care and early mobilization are important aspects of post-operative care. Physical and occupational therapy may also be initiated to help the patient regain strength and function. Like any surgical procedure, surgery for ependymoma of the spine via the posterior approach carries risks, has some inherent risk and potential complications, including infection, bleeding, nerve injury, spinal cord injury, and also the complications related to anesthesia. The risk of complications can be minimized through careful patient selection, meticulous surgical technique, and post-operative monitoring. So let us conclude. Among all the approaches for the spinal cord ependymomas, the posterior approach is the most common surgical technique. With careful preoperative planning, precise surgical technique, and diligent post-operative care, very good outcomes, successes, more than 70 to 80% can, and in smaller cases, even 90% success rate can be achieved. Do not consider this as a medical advice. Consult a qualified medical practitioner, a neurosurgeon or a spine surgeon before embarking on any treatment. Read the disclaimer completely in the description below. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, all my colleagues for attending this one. If you have any doubts, you can message me on my WhatsApp number. I'll be reporting back to you. And do subscribe to this channel and do share this video with your colleagues, friends, patients, and everyone. It may be useful to them. Thank you. Have a great day.